There is no better way to get ready for the holidays than to unwrap a little bit of everything around Belmont women's basketball, and we are going to do that today, and it all starts right now. Ogumba Wale for the win. You are locked on women's basketball. Your daily podcast on women's basketball. Happy Monday and happy holidays, friends. It is December 19th, 2022. I am Missy Heydrich. I'm the National Women's Basketball Correspondent at The Next. Thank you for making Locked On Women's Basketball your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. First time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 with the promo code locked on. That's prizepicks.com, promo code locked on. And after you listen today, please go to www.thenext.com hoops.com and visit us at the next where we cover women's basketball all day every day i am so excited today that i get to chat all things basketball with the head coach of the belmont bruins one of the top mid-major programs in the nation over the past several years coach bart brooks is here with me thank you coach so much and let's just dive right in because that's what i want to talk about first I know your non-conference season has been a gauntlet with a host of quality opponents. A lot of P5 teams you've seen. Louisville, Iowa, Villanova, Georgia Tech, Georgia. Um, I know there's no moral victories in this business, but tell me a little bit about what you have learned about your team as you guys have navigated these first uh, month and a half or so of the season. Yeah, well, you know, first of all, thanks for having me on, Missy. Appreciate um, all you do to support and to grow this great game that we get to be a part of and uh, really excited to be a part of this this program. Um, yeah, our, our non-conference schedule has been it's been challenging this year, obviously. And and I think what I've learned the most about um, kind of going through uh, a, a long stretch of of not getting a positive result is that we're still pretty good. I really like my team. I think we're, um, I think we're probably the best team that I've I've ever had here uh, since mm-hmm. I've been the head coach at Belmont. And uh, the results might not indicate that, but I think what I see every day in terms of the progress and the the growth and the competitiveness of of our players and our team, we're we're really good. And um, we're just playing against some teams that are also really good. And we haven't quite figured out a way to win some of those close games. We've been in a lot of close ones and, and we haven't figured out a way to win them. And I think that's going to be a, a, a area of growth for us as the season goes, we've got to figure out a way to win some of these close ones, but, uh, I, I really like my team and I think we, we have been challenged, uh, and we've learned a ton about ourselves through this challenge. When you think about some of those close losses and then figuring out what the kind of gets you over the hump, what are some of the things that have stood out to you to say, all right, this is one area that we know we're going to have to improve on in order to get over that piece to get you some of those wins, especially in a close game situation? Yeah, I think probably one of the, the biggest things is that we've we've dug ourselves a hole early in a lot of these games. Uh, you know, we've we've been I think we we're down 19 against Villanova in the first half. And, mm-hmm. you know, we, we were down big against Georgia Tech and we've, we've been down big a lot and we, we haven't had great starts. But once we get rhythm and once we start playing well, um, we've been really good in stretches, too. So I, I think there's just a, a lack of consistency and. Uh, I think part of that is is on me and in rotations and figuring out figuring out who who plays when and and what lineups work together. We're still figuring some of that out, but uh, I think also part of it is is just the consistency. Players in new roles this year. Uh, you know, we're we're a we're a veteran team, but we're we're still a new team together. You know, have, having some a uh, couple of transfers and, and freshmen that are, are in the mix with some returning players. So uh, it, it's just been a little bit slower figuring that stuff out than, than I would like. Uh, but I know once we get it figured out and we're, we're moving in the right direction, uh, but once we get it figured out, I think we're going to be pretty good, but consistency, we've got to be more consistent. 
Well, and as you said, it's hard sometimes to figure those things out on a daily basis when you look at the competition that you're facing. You know, you're not playing another directional school from down the road. You're up against quality P5 opponents of which, you know, if you don't bring your A game from the get go, it can be a long afternoon i.e. the nine points you score in the second quarter against Georgia, but then put yourself back in the ball game and really have a chance to be there at the end. Yeah, I mean, there's no doubt about it. And I, I think as a coach, probably the, one of the hardest things I have to wrestle with every year, and, and maybe uh, it's it's even more magnified with the schedule that we play, is we're trying, as a coach, we're trying like crazy to figure out a way to win a game in November and mm-hmm. December. Mm-hmm. But there's a long game here, and if you if you, you – scale out and and look at what the whole season holds, we'd probably be better served trying to develop our bench players more in these early games. And that's that's been a struggle for me. And I, and I have not done a good job of that. And that's one of those things that as as a coach, hindsight's 2020, but yeah. um but I, I think that's always a challenge when you're in when you're a mid-major program and you're competing against these these really talented good teams early. Uh, you've got to be really good early to beat them, and uh, that it's it's hard sometimes to, to develop your bench when you're we're trying to win one basketball game, and absolutely. and that's that's been a struggle. Yeah, absolutely. Let's talk a little bit about this roster because I know there's a lot of attention. She lands on many lists, watch lists all over the nation. Um, Destiny Wells has been one of those impact type point guards um, that has launched herself onto the national stage. Talk a little bit about her game, what she brings to the floor, why she is one of those top point guards in the nation. Yeah, D- Destiny, I think, is a, a really unique player in that she's got um, unbelievable ability to get the ball anywhere she wants on the floor. And she's a really difficult player to stay in front of. I mean, it, it's you almost need a second player uh, to, to – I mean, the number of, of games where we've played, she's been in a crowd the whole game because she is so good if she's if she's got space to operate. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think what makes her good for us is she's a she's a really talented scorer who's got the ability and the vision and the skills to set her teammates up as well. So she's a really difficult cover in that you you can't you can't load to her and 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 give up threes to other people. We got people on the floor who can make you pay as well. So uh, she's, she's a selfless player who's able to score 30 any given night. And that's a really unique combination. Um, You mentioned having new faces into with veteran players. So kind of creating this new unit of Belmont Bruins on the floor. One of those new faces, Sydney Harvey comes to you as a grad transfer. Um, She started every game for you so far this season, um, averaging almost 30 minutes a game. What does she add to your mix that maybe you didn't have before a year ago? Yes, Sid is um, a really veteran player. She's played a lot of basketball. I mean, uh, you know, four years at South Florida and, and you know, uh, outside of the COVID year, went to NCAA tournaments every year they were there and yeah. uh, has played in a lot of big games, uh, understands kind of what what that level is. Um, so So just the stability – and her experience has been huge for us. I think what Sid brings is another another really capable scoring threat on the perimeter. Mm-hmm. And you know, we we've got we've got some really good guard play. Uh, it's difficult to to match. You know, th- there's someone on the floor that's going to be going against someone's third best perimeter defender, and we feel pretty good about that matchup usually. And if it's Sid. We feel great about it. If it's Kylan McGuff, who's a, a sophomore for us, we, we feel really good about it. So um, I, I think she just brings a, a more versatility to our game. I think she's taken a little bit of the weight off of Destiny's shoulders and, and, and the scoring load. Sid, Sid's capable of having big games. She had a big game against Villanova, mm-hmm. uh, was really efficient against a really difficult defensive team in Louisville. So uh, she's she's been good for us, and and she's getting more comfortable with her role and, and what we're looking – uh, what we're trying to do as an offense together. And, and I, I know that her best basketball is still ahead of her here. Well, and experience is irreplaceable. And as you said, for someone that has seen so much game time and so much floor time, that's just an added benefit to having that with your younger players. You mentioned those younger faces, three freshmen on this roster. How have they fit into that rotation a little bit? And what have you liked to see out of those new kids and the younger ones? Yeah, so I, I think it's been it's been a challenge um, early early season that we can't just 
throw them in and see what happens. And I, I yeah. guess we could, and maybe I should have in hindsight, but, <laughs> um, but I really, I really am pleased with what, what they're doing every day. Mm -hmm. I think being, um, being a part of a, of a program where we've got a lot of veteran guards, it's not easy for our freshmen, Brooke Highmark and, and Kate Hollifield to, to get a lot of minutes yeah. in, in some of these tough, close games. Uh, but what they do behind the scenes in practice, uh, the the effort, the energy, the everyday preparation, they stay they stay after every practice. There hasn't been a practice this year where those who, those two have left when practice is over. And uh, that work, whether whether they see it right now, that work will pay off. And I love I love their approach. They're great teammates, and they're both good enough to help us on the floor. And yeah. Brooke Brooke Highmark came in. Uh, we we played at Lipscomb a couple weeks ago, and she came in and had a great game, seven points off the bench and, and had huge minutes for us in that game. And uh, they're both capable of doing that. So I'm really pleased with where they are as, as freshmen. I think they're they're going to work themselves into a, a bigger, more prominent role as the year goes. All right. Well, it's all about progression. And we're going to talk about that in just a minute because I want to talk with Coach about what drives the culture for Belmont women's basketball. And for him, I always like to ask people, why Belmont? But first, we have to talk about the people that help keep us moving here at Lockdown Women's Basketball, and that is a note from our friends at Prize Picks. How does it work? Well, you pick two to six players, and if they go score more or less than their Prize Picks projection, you can win up to 25 times your money on any entry. My son would tell you, you maybe want to pick Giannis. It's hard to say. I don't know. But no competing against other people. It's just you versus the projections available. And Price Picks offers projections on any sport you watch. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It is that easy. Saved and fast withdrawals and operational in over 30 states and Canada. So download the Price Picks app and go to prizepicks.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First time users can receive 100%. Instant deposit matchup to $100 with the promo code locked on. If you deposit $100, you will give $100. If you deposit $50, Prize Picks will give you $50. Don't forget to enter the promo code locked on to sign up for an instant deposit match up to $100. And also, our friends at Turo. Turo is the world's largest car sharing marketplace. With Turo, you can book any car you want wherever you want it for a community of local hosts. Browse a huge selection of vehicles for just about any occasion or budget. The holidays are here, so book an SUV or minivan for a family road trip, a pickup truck for errands, or even test drive an EV. Every trip is backed by liability insurance, terms and conditions, and exclusions apply. Forget boring rental cars and find your drive at Turo.com. Hi, everybody. I am Missy Heydrich, and thank you for making Locked On Women's Basketball your first listen today. For your second listen, check out Locked On Sports today. From the games that matter the most to the biggest stories in sports, go beyond the scoreboard and behind the scenes with local experts and insight only Locked On can provide. Locked On Sports today, available on this app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts. I am joined today by Coach Bart Brooks, head coach of the Belmont Bruins. Um, coach, this is your sixth season now as a head coach at Belmont. Um, you spent 11 years on the staff working for Doug Bruno at DePaul. I want to take you back a bit. Um, and what was it about this job six years ago that intrigued you? Why Belmont? Yeah, that's it's a great question. I've, I, um, I was really happy at DePaul. Uh, my wife uh, played for Coach Bruno before I got there. And so I met my wife through the connection at DePaul. Um, I was there for 11 years. That was my family. I loved every second of my time there, uh, knowing I always wanted to be a head coach. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, had, I, I hadn't applied. Belmont was the first job I've, I've applied for in my life that I actually went through the application process and the interview process. And um, I have no idea why they hired me. <laughs> I don't know how far down the list or how many people said no or whatever, how, how that worked out. I'm, I, I just know I'm not giving it back because I think I'm in. I'm in one of the best places in the country in terms of women's basketball and 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 where uh, places to raise my family. I've got two young kids. And I think when I I evaluated the job and the program uh, from afar, not knowing a lot about Belmont, mm -hmm. then starting to research it and then coming here to visit campus and see the place, uh, it, it was I felt like it was we were sitting on a gold mine that whoever got this job could turn this into not just uh, a competitive uh, 
team in the OVC that could go to the NCAA tournament every couple of years, but that could be nationally relevant. And I thought we had all the pieces in place uh, with, with the city of Nashville, uh, this beautiful campus. Um, and there were maybe a couple of little pieces missing that, that I thought we could bring to this program. And uh, when we got here, we, we worked really hard to recruit players who had a, a, an edge and a competitiveness that they wanted to compete at the highest level. Mm -hmm. And um, I think we found a good recipe with people who are a little bit too small, or a little bit too slow, something not quite right for the big guys to pass up on them uh, that we felt like they could still compete at that level. And, and we, we got it right, I think, more than we got it wrong. And we found a way to to get ourselves into a place where we could compete in some, with some of these teams. And now that it's been a long, a long grind to get to this place, um, we Maryland beat us by 65 points. I think my second year here, and so we've taken some lumps along the way. But man, when I I just think about Belmont and uh, the place that I get to work every day, it, it's a really special place in that there's so much more than basketball going on here. That there's a bigger picture. There's um, it's a student focused, encouraging, supportive place. Mm -hmm. And I think our athletes feel that whether it's, you know, the, the coaching staff, the athletic staff, uh, the people who serve the uh, chicken minis at Chick-fil-A, the cafeteria workers, the, the people in the president's office, there's, there's a holistic community of support here that I think it, it permeates every aspect of this university. And uh, I'm I'm just extremely blessed. I, I bring my kids to to practice, and they can watch the guys practice our, our men's team, and I don't worry about what they're going to hear or what they're yeah. going to see, and that's really really special to me. So um, I, I think we're just in a, a really really cool place that is now being resourced and supported uh, to compete with with the big guys, and that really excites me. Um. Culture is a big word in sports, and it's one, especially in college athletics. So when a parent or a potential recruit talks to you, how do you define what you want the culture of your program to be? Yeah, that, that's a great question, and it's something that uh, I think we, we talk a lot about it, um, but we really talk about how it's our job every day to, to enhance it and to, to grow our culture. And um, it, it, culture is something that it's it's a living organism and, and it needs daily care uh, to grow. And, and if you neglect it, it, you can you can lose it quickly. And um, it's all of our job in our program to, to keep it in a good place. And mm -hmm. uh, I, I think with our team, really, really important that we bring people into our program who are from different places, have different backgrounds, have different experiences, have a different family dynamic, come from a different place in the country, um, different socioeconomic status. Uh, I think all of those those um, those different ways of having diversity on your team are really, really important. And what what's really cool about what I get to do is I get to coach these young people who are from all these different backgrounds have these different experiences and they come together and we work for one common purpose. And I think through, through our, 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 our drive to be good at basketball, to be a great team together, uh, there's some unbelievable bonds and friendships that are formed. And that's one of the best, best things about my job is watching, uh, watching a young person from the middle of nowhere, farmland, Tennessee, <laughs> befriend someone from the inner city yeah. who have, on the on the outside nothing in common but once they get to know each other realize that they're actually very very similar and so that's a really cool thing so i think our culture uh, we we work hard to not so much dictate a culture but to provide a community where everyone can bring their culture to our community well, and I love what you said, because you're absolutely right. Like it can disappear very quickly. And, you know, I mean, I think we've probably all watched that in, in every sport, in every locker room, professional college, even in the high school ranks where just one little thing can sort of um, have it blow up very, very quickly. And so what was a great thing can become something very negative. And to be able to work on that on a daily basis, that's a lot of work on not only your part, but of the young people that are on your roster and in that locker room. It takes it takes everyone to be part of that. 
I, I would ask you, um, spending 11 years under Doug Bruno, when you took this job and you said, oh, I'm leaving Chicago, I'm headed south, what was maybe one of the, you know, what was his words of wisdom that he parted you with? Man, I, I feel like I was in a coaching clinic for 11 straight years, every day. Um, the, the number of things that I took, I, I, everything in our program had his hands are on it in some, some form or another. Um, I'm so blessed that he was so good to me as an assistant to help prepare me for this, this opportunity. And, you know, I, I think just, it, it was hard for me because I, I tried to do everything like he did it when I first got here. Yeah. Um, but he he made he made sure to communicate to me that I need to be myself, that I need to that I need this to be my program, not not a mini Doug program. And man, as, as good and as consistent as they've been, uh, just living that for 11 years, seeing the consistency and the effort that it takes to continually be good every year, no matter who's injured, no matter who you lose through graduation we were good every year at DePaul and it is really difficult to be good consistently. And that was a uh, man that just watching his, his formula and how he handled his business every day. That was, um, that was invaluable experience. I, I know it prepared me for, for what I'm, what I'm dealing with right now, for sure. All right. We're going to talk about that consistency in just a moment. And Belmont has made a move. They are now part of the Missouri Valley and that adds a whole host of new things to a coach's plate. Uh, but first, I want to tell you about one of our other great sponsors. So we all know how ExpressVPN protects your privacy and security online. But here's something you might not know. You can also use ExpressVPN to unlock movies and shows that are only available in other countries. Maybe you've run out of stuff to watch on Netflix. I know it happens to everyone. This can change your world. ExpressVPN allows you to binge something like The Office from UK Netflix. It's so simple. You just sign into Netflix. You fire up the ExpressVPN app. You change your location to the UK, refresh, and that's it. ExpressVPN lets you control where you where you want sites to think you're located. It's really actually that simple. So if you want to access hundreds of new shows, go to expressvpn.com slash locked on right now, and you can get an extra three months of ExpressVPN for free. That's expressvpn.com slash locked on, expressvpn.com slash locked on to learn more. I am Missy Heydrich, and thank you so much for joining us here on Locked on Women's Basketball. I am with Bart Brooks, head coach of the Belmont Bruins. All right, coach, um, you've in your first five seasons at Belmont, four regular and tournament conference championships, four NCAA tournament appearances from the Ohio Valley Conference. Last year, it was a monster win over Oregon in the first round, 73-70. You had Tennessee on the ropes. You lose by three in the round of 32. A round of 32 puts this program really smack in a national conversation. And then congratulations, now you get a new league. Welcome to the Missouri Valley. Talk to me a little bit about this move and what that looks like for all of you and, and how, if and how has it changed how you've approached this season? Yeah, well, well, first we're we're excited. Um, the the challenge is going to be immense. Uh, I have so much respect for the coaches and the players that we're going to compete against in the Missouri Valley, and and having watched uh, several of them on film just through uh, scouting preparation that you know played common non conference opponents, mm -hmm. uh, we, we're going to have our hands full, and uh, I'm excited about that challenge. Um, it has been uh, a lot of new in terms of organizing travel, figuring out how we're going to get where we're going to go. And uh, just just the rhythms of, of the weeks will be different than what we're used to. There, there'll be, a, you know, we had to buy everyone a winter coat because we're going to be up north in the winter and uh, Chicago and Iowa are not beautiful places to visit always in January and February. So, no. um, so, so it'll be a lot of new, a lot of different. I think it'll be probably a couple of years before we really get a handle on um, just the logistics of of moving in and out of, of travel in this league, uh, but in terms of the the basketball, I I, I don't I think our fans are going to love the competitiveness of the league. That there's going to be, you know, top to bottom, uh, every team in the league can can win mm -hmm. any night, and that that's a really cool thing as a coach and and I think as a fan base that we get to we get to really test ourselves. We we've got to be 
we've got to be consistently good to have success in this league. And I think as a coach, when you're preparing a team to be their best, um, playing against great competition is the best way to do that. So I'm, I'm excited about it. It's I'll probably be miserable. I probably won't sleep much, <laughs> but uh, it'll it'll be a great challenge. And I, I, I think we're up for it. Um, all right. You've got a game tomorrow, December 20th with Troy, and then a 10 day break uh, before you pick, you kick off conference play with Valparaiso. First off looking at this game tomorrow against Troy, what are some of the keys that you are all focused on heading into this one before the break? Yeah. Tro Troy's a really unique team to play against. They, they are um, extremely aggressive on both ends of the floor. They, they play about six different defenses. They'll give you different looks almost every other possession. Uh, they're, if not the best, one of the best offensive rebounding teams in the country. And, and they play a style that no lead is safe. I mean, Dave, I've, I've seen them score 20 points in a three minute span multiple times. Right. And so that they are a really, really dangerous, difficult team to prepare for and to play against. Mm -hmm. And so we've got our hands full. Um, so I think huge keys for us, we've got to take care of the basketball and, and we've got to eliminate their easy baskets, whether that's from our turnovers or, or their second shots. And if we do those two things, uh, I think we've got a, got a chance. When, uh, after you play tomorrow, then you're on a, you, you have the holiday break. So what does the holiday break look like for your team, for your program in terms of time off? And then when you bring your players back? Yeah, we, we give our, our team, uh, usually a pretty good break. And, and part of this is last year, unfortunately, we, we all got sick with COVID. <sighs> December 15th and everyone went home and we didn't come back until the 26th. And when they came back, everyone looked really good. They looked refreshed. They looked ready to have a, have a great non-conference season. And, and we ended up having a really good non -con or a conference season. And mm -hmm. um, as a coach, I think you're always nervous when you send your players home that they're going to come back. Uh, they're going to sit on a couch eating potato chips for <laughs> you know six straight days and, yes. uh, and not be able to move or run. And, and in reality, I think um, that break is probably healthy and good for them in the middle of the season that everyone kind of needs to get away and, and mentally refresh, physically recharge, and then come back and, and get after it again. So we're going to give them a good good five days off. Uh, that, that's a, a good long break. And then they get back and, you know, we, we'll prepare for the gauntlet that is the Missouri Valley and, and get ready and have to run off the, the turkey and the whatever else we have for Christmas dinner. Well, and I know every every coach looks at the the quote unquote holiday break, and it really is the time from when your kids come back to when classes start again in January. Everybody approaches that differently. So the the quote unquote no school weeks where there isn't as much oversight on time and practice and what have you. How do you balance that practice time with your travel and games? Is it, is it more just based on what the schedule looks like, knowing that you play Valpo on the 30th and then you've got to get going from there, and then you just sort of piecemeal it until they get back to class in a more routine, so to speak? Yeah, I think we, we try to carve out some extra team time. Uh, I think what one of the cool things about being on campus during break is you almost have the whole place to yourself, uh, and and the team, I think, enjoys those moments because they're all together in the in their, their campus apartments and you know, when we're, we get them a meal, they're all eating together. And there's, there's a, there's a togetherness that's, that's really enjoyable during this time. And uh, so we try to, we try to maximize that time as much as possible. And knowing that we don't have a class to run, you know, we're, we're not running from class or running to class. So I think what happens is they end up staying and hanging in the locker room longer or hanging and, and getting extra shots up or coming in, you know, throughout the day to shoot the ball or to hang, come, come see the coaches on occasion. So I, I think it's just been a, usually just a really healthy, let's just get back to spinning together time. Cause you get so busy during the, during the season with school, uh, everyone's going in nine different directions every day. And I think it's just kind of a nice, um, it's, it's almost like a little, a little family retreat for us here. Absolutely. All right. Well, I've got two questions for you before I let you go. And, um, First off, above and beyond uh, the arena, your office, practice courts, etc., what is your favorite spot on the Belmont campus? Oh, the, no doubt about it, the Rose Garden. We have um, one of the absolute most amazing Rose Gardens 
that I've, I don't know if I've ever seen another rose garden. So it's my favorite because I've never <laughs> seen another one. Uh, but I tell you what, I walked by it for two and a half years, never stopped and smelled the roses. Mm -hmm. And finally during COVID, because everything slowed down, I was walking around campus and I just stopped and I went to the rose garden and I smelled there's 75 different varieties of roses in there. And That's I smelled awesome. them all and they all smelled different. They all smell unique. And I had no idea. I thought a rose was a rose. <laughs> um, but just taking the time to slow down and smell the roses, mm -hmm. like someone said long ago, um, that was just a good visual and reminder for me that I'm, I'm on this amazing campus in the midst of all this beauty and I need to slow down and see it. So every time we have a recruit on campus, we, we stop in the rose garden and we smell the roses. That's fantastic. I love that. And well, and I'm a gardener. So I think I'm that may have to be on my bucket list. When I come to Nashville's, I'm going to have to go check out the Belmont yes. Rose Garden. You have to. Must do. <laughs> uh, all right. So as we slow down a little bit um, after you play tomorrow night, you'll have a break both with your family and then with all with with your players. Um, but what is one of the favorite traditions, uh, holiday traditions for the Brooks House? Yeah, I think. Um... You know, there's so many, but one of my, the one that I'm really looking forward to is spending time with my big green egg. I've got a big green egg that has sat. Um, it's been deserted for <laughs> since, you know, really the season started since November. Uh -huh. And I'm looking forward to me and my boys. We go out there and we we smoke up some bacon. We throw a turkey breast on there, some steaks, uh, just really spending quality time with my boys. But with the big green egg fired up that's i'm looking forward to that well that sounds fantastic and even better with the w tomorrow against troy i know that will make everybody feel good in uh the world of belmont women's basketball heading into the holiday break coach this has been a true pleasure you have put this program um, on the national radar whether uh, mid-major or not, everybody knows who Belmont is and everybody in the Missouri Valley knows how difficult that is going to be of a trip this season. Um, and I'm looking forward to watching your team all season long. So I really do thank you for joining us here on Locked on Women's Basketball today. M Missy, thank you. And thanks again for all you do. You guys are awesome. Well, I appreciate it. Um, I want everybody to join me here on Mondays. We talk everything about college hoops, but come back all this week for more episodes. College basketball, WNBA news, the international action. We have got you covered at Lockdown Women's Basketball. Thank you for making this your first listen today. Now, make sure to make Lockdown Sports Today your second listen. Peter Bukowski brings you the biggest stories from around the sports world in 20 minutes. You get analysis and opinions before anyone else with our local and national experts and insiders. Locked on Sports Today podcast available on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. Thank you, everybody. Happy, happy holidays. Keep your eye on Belmont women's basketball, and we will be back soon. Thank you for listening at Locked on Women's Basketball.